Hey guys! I uh, hope you like this. This is my first time trying one of these videos, so we'll see how it goes. It's your boy, Mr. Romeo, coming at you live from the kitchen. Um, <laughs> what I want to do today is I want to show you something that's pretty useful, all right, guys? It's uh, finding the area of a triangle. Now, you might be thinking to yourselves, when am I ever going to use finding area of a triangle in real life? I want to give you an example because this happened to me just a couple weeks ago. Um, since we've been home, we're starting a lot of uh, projects on the house, and we have a room where the roof go, forms a triangle. So uh, we're going to paint the wall. We need to know how much paint we actually need to get. So I had to calculate the surface area of a triangle. So uh, I've used this in real life, and I think you will too. And I think you guys are going to like this one because it's super easy. All right. All right. Um, so here's what we're going to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give put my ugly face away. And what I'm going to do is I want you to look at right here. Now, it says here a parallelogram can be de decomposed into two identical triangles. How can you use the formula for the area of a parallelogram to find the area of a triangle? So the last couple of days, guys, you have been learning how to do the area of a parallelogram. Sorry. Um, so the last couple of days, you guys have been learning how to find the area of a parallelogram. You do the base times the height. Now, if you take a look at this picture, this picture is excellent visual for you. To find the area of a triangle, right, if you look at this, sorry, I messed up a little bit there. If you look at this picture of this parallelogram, you'll notice that if you cut it right in half, you get two triangles. So... If you want to find the area of a triangle, you can use the formula for area of a parallelogram and then chop it in half or multiply it by one half or divide it by two. Okay? So if we look here, the area of one triangle is half the area of the related parallelogram. So if you look at... The formula for parallelogram, area equals base times height. So the area of a triangle is half the area. So area equals half times base times height. Simple enough, right? Let's go over and take a look. So if we look at example number two, all right, and I'm going to hide myself again. If we look at example number two, we see over here a picture of a birdhouse. Okay, and it says the side of a birdhouse is in the shape of a right triangle. What is the area of the side of the birdhouse? So, what we have to do is we are going to use our formula and see if we can figure out how much area this side of the birdhouse makes up. So, to find the area of a triangle, we do one half times the base times the height. So we do one half times eight times eight. Now you can do this anyway in your head. You could do eight times eight equals 64 and 64 cut in half is 32. You can do one half times eight equals four and four times eight equals 32 because we all know that it doesn't matter when you're multiplying what order you multiply in. So you can do whatever order makes you comfortable. Okay. So we're going to move on. Sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through two examples on the screen. So the first one I'm going to do is number four because it's nice and easy and I want you to be able to see it. second one I'm going to do is number five and it's a tricky one. So that's why I picked that one for you. So let's look at number four. All right, number four is pretty simple, right? We have a triangle and we can see that the base is four and the height is two. So what we do is we plug it into our formula. We take one half, we multiply it by two and four, 
And when we do, we get an answer of 4 feet. And remember, since we're dealing with area, I know I didn't say this at all, but because we're multiplying feet by feet, we're going to have feet squared. Okay, so the area inside this triangle, this purple area on the inside, would equal about four feet. So if this was my window, I would need enough paint to cover four feet squared. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to move on. Oop, let me erase. Sorry. And what I did for our next problem is I picked a little bit of a tricky example. So I want you to take a look at number five. Now, number five is a little bit tricky, not because we're using decimal numbers. You guys can use a calculator. It's because they give you three different values, and you have to be very careful with which values you pick. If you look here, we notice that we have 4.2 inches here, and we're going to call that our base. Okay, so 4.2 inches is going to be our base. Now I see two more numbers here. I have to be very careful which one I select as my height because these are a lot different. I will get two totally different values. Now, if you look, the height is from here to here, not from here to here, not from this side to this side. It's from where the bottom is to where the top is. So if we look over here at this dotted line, we would recognize that this three and a half inches is the height, not seven inches. This is the hypotenuse. This is the angle. Okay, so this would be our height. So now what we do is we take our formula. We have one half. We multiply it by 4.2 inches, and we multiply again, excuse my terrible multiplication sign, by 3.5 inches. And I'm going to pull out my calculator to do that because I don't want to waste your time. And when I do, 4.2, times 3.5 times one half. I get the answer, seven and 35 hundredths inches squared. So again, if this were the shape of the wall in my attic, um, I would need enough paint to cover seven and 35 hundredths inches squared. Anyway, boys and girls, that was our recording. Um, let me see if I can bring my webcam back up. Um, again, guys, I miss you all. I uh, hope that was a little bit helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, and uh, I'll see you soon.